Now on Sunrise, an environmental emergency in Southern Oregon. What's causing thousands of birds to get sick and die in the Klamath Basin and the lasting impacts it will have. Plus, we take a look at how therapy dogs are helping people prepare for court appearances. Your news starts now. Good morning and happy first day of fall. I'm Libby Dowsett. It's shaping up to be a great weather day. Daisy Caballero is here with our first look at your forecast. Daisy, it is so nice. It was nice yesterday. It yes. looks like another one. Libby, it's going to be another picture perfect day. Yesterday we hit 78 degrees. We should be right about there or if not a degree or two cooler. But I wanted to first take you guys off to a few of our coastal cities. Check out these views, guys. Oh my gosh, I wish I could just transport over there really quick and then come right back. Looking at Newport this morning, again, beautiful view. Cannon Beach, you can see Haystack Rock there. A few folks already walking on the beach in Lincoln City as well. Those uh, cotton candy skies are just uh, to die for. All right, looking at the coast forecast for today, it's going to be another comfortable day off the coast. High of 69 degrees for Astoria, 68 for Pacific City, and a little bit cooler at 63 degrees as we're looking over to the Newport area. Partly sunny skies is what's on tap for them. So looking at the satellite and radar, not a lot going on. We will start to see a little bit more of that cloud coverage as we're looking into the second half of the day today. But before we talk about that, Let's talk about our current temperatures this morning. Already reaching near mid 50s for the Beaverton area, 53 for West Lynn, 49 degrees for Tigard, looking down south just a bit more, 51 degrees for Salem. Now looking ahead, this is what we're projecting to see. Up and down the I-5 corridor by noon, those 70s and 60s, and then we will be warming up uh, 5 to 10 degrees, just depending on where you're located. Let me back to you. Thank you, Daisy. New this morning, a mass shooting in Alabama's biggest city. At least four people are dead in Birmingham, 18 more injured. Police believe multiple gunmen opened fire on a crowd in the city's entertainment district. Detectives are still trying to figure out how and why this unfolded. Right now, they say this was not a random attack, but they are not sure who was the target. Investigators also tell NBC that the gunmen used switches, devices that turn their handguns into fully automatic weapons. An outbreak of botulism has led to the death of more than 70,000 75,000 birds at the Thule Lake National Wild, Wildlife Refuge in the Klamath Basin, the largest outbreak ever at that refuge. That's according to two biologists with the Bird Alliance of Oregon. Unfortunately, they say the outbreak will persist until sometime in October when we start to see more consistent rainfall. Biologist Teresa Wicks monitors bird populations in the basin and saw hundreds of dead birds on their last trip to Thule Lake. Being able to see 500 dead birds from the shoreline means that there are a lot more dead birds out in the, you know, out in the open water and in the wetlands and whatnot. It's a pretty, yeah, it's a pretty sad thing to see. The Klamath Basin is a critical habitat for nesting and migrating birds along the Pacific Flyway, but 90% of the wetlands there have been lost due to climate change, making outbreaks like this worse. Wicks believes this outbreak will have a lasting impact on bird populations up and down the West Coast. A woman who survived a tragic fire decades ago is now on a mission to help others who have been exposed to different types of trauma. Our Celine Stevens spoke with her to learn more about her journey. I was in a, uh, a carnival fire. It was a propane explosion that uh, five people were killed. I was very seriously burned, third degree burns. Kathy Morton says she was only four years old when that accident happened at a carnival in Odessa, Washington. I had 19 skin graft operations and I fought for my life. She was in the hospital for six months. Then, inspired by her mother who took care of her when she was in the hospital, Morton turned to energy work, which involves channeling and balancing energy within a person. It became her passion, leading her to her life today. 
She wrote a memoir and hosts workshops around Oregon to help people deal with their traumas through various spiritual methods. Her passion took her to Maui in 2023 after the devastating wildfires. Her focus was to help survivors. I traveled there just to be present, to wear shorts and a short sleeve shirt and say, just by my presence, this too shall pass. You can do this. You are strong and you will overcome. While Oregon has also faced several wildfires over the last few years, the 2020 Almeda fire was even more personal for Morton, causing some of her friends to lose their homes. I also made my home available to um, some of the friends that had lost their home. And I myself had to leave because the smell of the wildfire and, um, and the ash in the air, it caused my nervous system to freak out. While those times were difficult, Morton has remained connected to what she believes helped her heal and tries to teach others how to cope and move forward with hardship. There's only one thing that's consistent in this world and that is change. So just because you feel that way today doesn't mean that some miracle or some wonderful thing might happen tomorrow. And you need to suit up and show up for, for those things. That was Celine Stevens reporting. Morton also said another great resource for burn survivors is a nonprofit called the Phoenix Society. As for Morton, she will be hosting more workshops in Portland in the coming weeks. For more information, if you're interested in signing up, you can head to our website, kgw.com. A popular cat statue has been stolen in downtown Portland. It's the Keep Portland Weird Cat that was located at Waterfront Park. It's part of an outdoor exhibit from the movie Coraline. It was taken sometime between Friday night and early Saturday morning. Portland Metro Chambers says this is not only art that everyone is meant to enjoy, it's also supposed to go up for auction to support the OHSU Children's Hospital. Navigating the criminal justice system and appearing in court can be stressful for many people. That's why a Portland Animal Clinic is offering up therapy dogs to help. Our Sydney Dorner has that story. This training is set up to mimic real life court proceedings, preparing these furry friends to provide emotional support to victims during these often uncomfortable trials. Tell me the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. A mock trial, setting up volunteers from the Dove Lewis Animal Hospital for success when they bring therapy dogs into the courtroom, a service Kathy Wentworth has been doing for 10 years. And we are uh, very passionate about helping people in situations that are difficult for them that are going through the court system. Whether they're young people, children, adults, everyone needs a little helping hand. The comprehensive training was led by Multnomah County District Attorney's Office, which has a program specifically for assisting people defined by law as victims. Deputy District Attorney Chris Rothfuss says that anyone can be impacted by a crime. Testifying in a courtroom is extremely traumatizing, extremely uncomfortable, extremely stressful for a victim. And so having a therapy dog there beside the victim can help to reduce that stress level. This comfortability ultimately lends to a more in-depth trial. It's found to be very effective in allowing them to communicate and very effective at allowing them to kind of manage their emotions that they're going through. The event held at a Portland Police Training Division featured a judge and victim advocates demonstrating what happens before, during and after a victim testifies. The Dove Lewis Portland area canine therapy teams volunteer in Multnomah, Washington and Clackamas counties. Together they contributed over 4,000 volunteer hours in 2023 and are pushing for more this year. Standing with victims of domestic abuse, sexual violence, human trafficking, and at-risk youth. An animal that uh, is not asking them questions, there's no judgment, um, and it, uh, it, just, it just gives them a moment to collect themselves, and uh, in some cases, uh, it helps with their confidence. Sydney Dorner, KGW News.